early evangelists of Jin. Also, Sven, Sven plays a mean, a mean uh, silver pick just in general. He turns the tides in a lot of late game team fights, and he adds mobility to this already kind of all over the place G2 roster. She's also really good as a kind of cornerstone in the one three one in the mid lane holding. So I think that band kind of sticks. And now when you see where Sven goes, if he goes for a slower Caitlyn, she doesn't fit in one three one style. I mean, actually, I like I like her in one three ones, but she has less wave clear. But she's yeah. more on the back foot because Caitlyn generally defends with her traps as opposed to playing aggressively and looking for picks. All right, well, with more of the junglers freed up right now, Spirit can go ahead and get his hands on an early yeah. game pressure as well in the form of the Elise. The timer ticks down, and I think you might be right here yeah. to win. That's what Fnatic are thinking this game. Yeah, Jin Lock-In plus Elise, really potent combination here, but that's what we talk about. Flavor bands like this Bard are suddenly falling out, and now Mythic can answer. And into low mobility AD carries in standard lanes, Bard can counteract a lot of the poke from Jin, and if you hit level 6, he's such an easy target to get Tempered Fate on, and you can then just combo him down. Uh, maybe even connect the spear here. So, already a much more exciting early game coming on here. It's hoping for standard lanes. Really, really hoping for standard lanes, because then some of these picks can really shine. For G2 still contemplating what their next couple of picks are going to be. Obviously, we can expect those mid lanes to not be revealed until the very last minute, which means we start might, might start looking at the top and the AD carry. But maybe I'm wrong, and maybe they do lock in the rise. I doubt it, though. Uh, I think they will. I mean, it's, if he hovers it for this long, who knows? Because he's off the zillion right now. Zier's out of the equation. And and Victor doesn't seem to yeah. suit well, that you're right. Yeah, so he, I think he prefers going blind right. rise. Because, again, G2 love playing 1-3-1. One, one. Like, it, it's their preferential style. And Victor, you can't play 1-3-1. One, one. Um, now, Fnatic know that what they're up against. They're probably going to leave top lane as their last counter pick and just lock something in mid here. Oh, no reason not to for the time being, so you can get an advantageous matchup in just about every one of those. For Febivin, he of course sharing a lot of that champion pool. But, you know, a lot of it taken away. Azir Vladimir pretty much must bans against these two. Vladimir in general. It's not dead. It's it's between Victor and Swain. I honestly like to see a Swain. I think he could do decently well here. So much raw crowd control effects. Oh, no. Okay. Don't go for the cow. Don't do it. He's asking. No. Can I play it? No. Don't like Alistar here. But I think Yellowstar is kind of out of options. Yeah, definitely having to whittled away as the timer ticks down. They will in the last couple of seconds. Ooh. Okay, just toying with us for a second. And he locks in the victor. Yeah, so you can definitely see what his thought process is once he cycles through these picks. He wants something, you know, that packs a punch. That can maybe get some kill pressure on his rise, but he's like, nah, not sure. Victor, really good late game insurance in terms of team fights, has a, a Okay, lane to rise. Both actually just farm. Um, especially Cleanse Victor can get out of the snare then. I don't like Alistar, and I need to see how well Yellowstar performs in this Alistar. If he gets stuck in a standard lane, I fear they will just get out laned 2v2. Yeah, we haven't really seen a whole lot of Alistar as of late here in Europe, and Yellowstar pulling it out. I'm curious to see what plan they have in mind. Maybe they opt for the lane swap instead. They almost must. We'll get more information once we see these top lane picks come out. Let me see what Sven ops in here for. It's either going to be Ash or Caitlyn. The Killista hover is a bit of a troll. Um, likely to be going to be Ash since it's preferred over Caitlyn. I feel for a to play like Sven. And the last couple of seconds tick down. They do in fact lock in the Nar for expect. That's a mean bit of damage on that team right now. Good uh, mix of it too. And that means uh, Febben has to switch to cleanse now. If he goes just exhaust victory, he's going to be a sitting duck for all these ultimates coming at him. Look at the pick potential on this victor here. Bard, Ash, any any members of G2 disappear into Fog of War and Febben suddenly has to play in the back foot in the mid lane. Well, he's definitely been on the up and up this split so far, but he's got himself a pretty big challenge. Trying to bring his team back to one and one on this series and keep themselves in the dominating first place position. But it's only one point that separates these two teams and it's about to change if they can't get themselves a victory here. What is that last lock and what do they put Gamsu on right now? I mean, at this point, you can't lock any melee matchups that get out lane by Nar. It's like Trundle kind of gets beaten. It, it will be maybe a Shen. Oh, oh, okay. oh okay. We've seen this once before. It's like that this is a counter pick, so. But you need to keep connecting your cues. When Oduwamda played it against Cabochard, and maybe Cabochard can shed some more light on it later on the desk. Cabochard kind of didn't carry on this matchup because he kept missing his cues in lane and didn't go for the EQ combo. This matchup is all about landing EQ combo aggressively as Jarvan, but then you need to know where the enemy jungler is. Spirit has really good innate synergy with both bot lane and top lane too. 
gank potential is incredibly high. He will get out farmed by Nidalee if he doesn't stick any of these ganks though. So really interesting dynamics that we have going into these games. But super passive bot lane on the same side too. I still think this worries me because now Fnatic tells us with his draft, hey, I want to lane top 1v1. But their bot lane tells us that they want to lane swap because Jin and Alistar should get absolutely murdered in the 2v2. Well, either way, they make not the most optimal decision in that case, but we'll have to see if this Jarvan pick can definitely help save them out a little bit more. As the coaches shake hands for the final time today, will Fnatic prevail? Will they get themselves another win or one win to even up this series, or is G2 going to take that very, very dominating 2-0? Yeah, I'm having issues adding, adding it all up here. I'm very... The math is hard on broadcast. I know about that. It's Krepo. not about. It's just about all these matchups and how they interact. And I wonder where Spirit is gonna spend his time. He's gonna look to equalize the bot lane. Am I overrating Ash Bard into Jin Alistar? Is the camp from Spirit and Gamster enough to put Expect in a dumpster and then have Fnatic play passive on the bot lane? Something they've done in the past. There's so many questions here that we need answering on. All these questions and more. They're about to be answered as we load up onto the rift. It's game two, it's G2, it's Fnatic! The two best teams in Europe. Let's hear it one more time. Who's gonna take this victory? A big welcome to Summoner's Rift. The crowd beats out a nice rhythm there. Mm -hmm. Actually, some spell find each other. <laughs> All right, we can get into what these comps need to do in the mid game later on. Let's just focus on some of the particular matchups here. Keep track. Really good deep board here by Mitty because he saw the poke come out of Reckless. So now they have information on Gromp, which is always key in some of these melee support matchups. You want to accelerate any champion to level two. At least gumsu has got the right skin. Sven is on the ward, so now Fnatic have info. More info than, honestly, G2 have right now. And it does look like lane swap. Yep. Give themselves a little bit of breathing space here. So, Gamsu, uh, obviously he won't be taking the 1v1 for a while, but when you get those long lanes, I guess it still functions that way. So, mm -hmm. you know, we could start to see this game start to turn in that favor, but it, it's it's all the gamble. It's a good pull off. It's good ward here. Look at the bottom of your screen. It's about to fade. The ward that Zven is on right now. Honestly, it gave Fnatic all the information for the lane swap. I don't think G2 was aware of that ward being placed. And they aggressively move in here into the enemy jungle as a four-man squad too. So look at where Spirit's starting deep into the enemy jungle here. So this is honestly the perfect lane swap start here for Fnatic. So they take a, a really good opening here. Spirit comes to get the double jungle on. They'll clear away the blue and the jungle. The map itself, it gets divided yeah. down that mid lane right now. And that's the risk of, of going for that delayed invade on Gromp in this matchup here. Now Mithy is looking to mimic something a lot of Karma players do. Bard is also fantastic as a champion to come up behind it because Feven needs to path into the left side of the lane. This is the right escape path. If you go down, you will have to use your flash. Yeah. Speaking of Febovin too, he didn't end up swapping on his summoner. He's still rocking the exhaust right now. He might be a very juicy target come those skirmishes, come those yep. fights for both these teams. But Perks is taking a little bit of damage, poke in the mid lane. It's obviously just a few love taps and we get ourselves into the fast push. Better champions still. Um, on the side of G2, although it's it's very minor. Honestly, I guess Gamsu can give everybody attack speed with his flag, starting the correct spell for lane swap. It's these little things, but might as well analyze them because nothing else yeah. is going on. Well, it's just, it's these are two teams that play at such a high level. The little mistakes, the little differences, that's what makes the difference. Yep. It's what you were talking about with the lane swap uh, oopsie that happened last game from Gamsu. Yeah, that was a major mistake. You, so you either analyze how the speed is influenced by some of the key champion choices, or you talk about Game of Thrones and Star Wars. That's all you can do as a color caster <laughs> in a lane swap. I mean, you got uh, two functions. Two functions, yeah. We got a binary tree here. All right, well, the decision is telling me right now that uh, the towers are going to get traded. That's my color casting. <laughs> Fantastic. I know. I'd, well, and who got way. the gold, Pyra? Ah, I think the top laner. Top laner. Hell. All the gold, both of Excellent. you. Excellent. This time, slightly quicker on the draw on the side of G2, as we expected, given their champion choices. All right, so we'll get into those long lanes and we'll see if Gamsu recovers from that mistake he made last game around. This time, Drake is way less of an early liability because you've got the cloud coming up first. So this is the, the difference here. Gamsu is slow right now. In last game, Gamsu was pushing right now. Just to indicate to people, viewers were asking me what went wrong. Now Mithy passes on the ward. Now Gamsu has the, honestly, permission to push. But they're going for the, honestly, a reverse cheese here. 
support wants to zone off the enemy top laner here, but look at where uh, jungler is. It almost worked. Spirit almost managed to get in time into that rush. Because every time a support wants to zone off the enemy top laner, he will go hyper aggressive. And this this looks a little dumb here from Fnatic now, but this was almost a beautiful cheese. And uh, Mythi could have straight up died there if it wasn't if Spirit was just two seconds quicker. But now Yellow starts coming around, and this is an aggressive punish and adaptation with no Bard Q available here. Did Mythi skill portal That's level two? Oh, yes, he did. We flashed it. There's the magical journey. Yellowstar follows through. That's a long one, and in comes Spirit. But they turn their attention to Sven, and he's desperately he's gonna trying the portal. to out trade and flash into that portal. He gets knocked up, but in comes Expect. Summoner heal, and that's first blood over to Expect. Oh, we have to talk about all this again. Let's see how it plays out. Spirit. That's gonna be a two for one kill, but Expect comes in here with another really good reactionary teleport. And flash. Oh, oh, he's dead. Oh no, Spirit. Three for one G2 esports. And this play gets turned upside down here. I love the initiative from Fnatic, but it was too disjointed. They need to strike immediately. They need the element of surprise. So Spirit should have been in that brush, Cocoon Mithi, and suddenly he's like, oh my god, why is the jungler here? But G2 had too much time playing it out, and the beautiful flash from Mithi. Also, he skilled Portal level 2 in the lane swap. Most bars in lane skill Health Pack level 2. That's again a minor adaptation that you never see punished, but here it is. Yeah, yellow star. You can't go for the combo. You just have to play zone control. You need to wait until maybe Mithy walks up to a wall and then you need to Q flash. If you W, it's too telegraphed. Any good player can actually flash a W traveling on land. And I mean, you have to call it out. If you go at Mithy, I don't think you can open with W. You always have to Q flash and pray that you're quicker and that you don't get red. And then Trick comes in here. Teleport from Expect was on point. And suddenly this play from Fnatic they committed to it, it failed in the setup where Spirit was revealed, but they kept committing to it afterwards, and G2 beautifully turned it around. Also, the presence of mind for Sven, not even Flash, he was just winning. He knew Expect was coming, used the heal, and suddenly Fnatic find themselves 1.5k gold, and now a tower behind. Yeah, and a lot of that gold sitting in the pocket of Expect as well. You know, keep hitting that theme of starved top lane as well. It's I mean, definitely not been the case for G2. The gold ahead right now, Pyro. This is massive. This yeah. is almost a game over. Fnatic really need to look for an aggressive pick. Well, Fnatic on the back foot yet again this time. G2 really showing up and showing that they can predict, they can adapt. Before Fnatic even makes some of these moves, it's been troubling for them to deal with the raw power and the quick decision making that G2 have. Well, let's take a look at this one again. What happened in the mid lane? Fabivin, well, he kind of got jumped on. This wasn't quite enough damage right in the beginning, but... They did manage to polish him off, by the way. So uh, even more gold on the side of G2. Yeah. Perks grabbing it. Even more gold here. Febben dropping two. So ah, it's just getting worse here. And now Trick is firing ahead too. Keep track of the levels here, because we only watch gold, but Trick six to Spirits five. Expect four, but with a massive gold advantage. Two camps is four, relatively even in experience. Perks is in the game too. And Sven and Mithy. Yeah, doing well for themselves as well. Remember, they only get online on level 6. Ash Arrow and Tempered Fate really good at catching out any of these Jin and Victor picks. Dangerous game Fnatic are playing right now. Trying to keep the waves at bay here. Sven and Mithy pushing it in with impunity. They know that Fnatic can't bring up anything around the rear. The vision game fairly strong for yeah. them right now. And Alistar from behind is almost impossible to play. I mean, look at Yelta. Level 3 Moby Boots, that's all he has. And if he goes for a combo, his flash isn't cooldown right now. It'll be super telegraphed. You can always portal out and people can just flash it. And that's the problem with Alistar with, with the cooldown reduction boots. I mean, the summoner cooldown being removed, the distortion enchant. Alistar actually went down a lot in value because he needed that flash every three minutes. Every five minutes is just simply not enough. Yeah, that's why we're not seeing very much of it. But Yellowstar, he took the gamble. It's not paid off for him. And they find themselves down. 2,000 gold difference is huge. And G2, look at this. They're not even... Yeah. Push nobody bot. pushing on the mid. Yeah, it's pushed. Bot collapse mid because uh, they sent um, Victor to base here. And they're losing that window. Fnatic's looking for a desperate collapse here. Yellowstar almost has flash. So Fnatic right now, they want to go for flash combo into flash flag and drag. Because Gams are pushing top and he can't really hold there against Expect. Oh boy, it's not good when you're already trying to make desperate plays at eight and a half minutes. Perks having absolutely no trouble now, getting a lot more farm up on Febivin as things are rolling on forward. Trick doing the same to Spirit in this jungle, and you know, they're starting to control the map, control the pace of the game yet again. 
And this matchup is so crucial and it relies on Gamso being able to use his kit to get ahead of the Gnar. Now that Expect has a gold lead, he can really counteract a lot of this all in potential, this poke potential with Gamso. Gamso will get out traded. Gnar went to the roughest part of the matchup too, which is 1 to 5. Level 7 plus Gnar can beat most melee matchups. And now also he will just have the confidence. Expect is definitely being catered towards more in this series. One time by choice and this time by a really good communicated TP. And I like grouping here on this top yeah. side. They're looking to try and collapse on Expector. Yeah, least. look, they're looking for double flash here. Dive. But look at how desperate this move is, you know? When support is at enemy tier two, looking for a flash dive, reckless pathing over. Oh, they know. They saw him, like, it's it's so telegraphed, so obvious. Hopefully, G2 learned, communicates, and expect plays back. Communication definitely not an issue on G2 side right now. Fnatic are gonna go ahead yeah. and four man push this bottom side. Good move, good move. Just keep trading. You, if you're behind, you want to keep trading evenly to make that that gold advantage relatively uh, less impactful, you know? If it stays at 2k gold for the rest of the game, great. By 30k gold each, it's slightly uh, irrelevant. The problem is G2 is picking away both mid lane and bot lane at the same time. Yeah, right now they're going to lose this outer here. If G2 can grab another tower in the bottom, that can give them an even more valuable trade. But for the time being, it's just going to be that mid. It's actually a long time for Fnatic to really take this back. And that's free damage that Sven's getting, yeah, really doubling up in value here. Yep. That's going to be enough for the tower. Focus fire on that tower. They did a good job bouncing the wave on the bottom lane, but Expect's already there catching it. Yeah, a one for two tower trade here, plus the map, plus the vision in between. Exit stage left in the portal, if needed. Satisfying sound effect. I can imagine for you especially. It's 10 minutes. This is a huge lead already for G2. No one needs to really bother about the Cloud Drake, but G2 can take whatever they want at their leisure. They may have lost an inner tower on the top side, but they're not too concerned about it. Expect is more than capable of holding it. The Black Cleaver build yep. this time coming in for him. Yeah, it's... Imagine if you're Jarvan. It's 11. Like, guys, give it, give it to me. I got the secret weapon. Jarvan counterpick. And then you look at 11 minutes. Ah, oh, damn, an enemy has Black Cleaver. Um, can we open? All right, well, here he comes. Ask. They're gonna try to collapse. He's bringing some friends. He's bringing spirit at least. But uh, that's a pretty big minion wave as well. And Expect's got a pretty healthy Gnar bar. Yeah, Expect doesn't care. He sees Yellowstar in the bottom lane, which means he's safe. Because he can almost 1v2. Uh, and Mithy's shadowing. Look, Mithy knows that the only gank that's gonna come is top lane. Because nobody's gonna gank mid lane. Nobody's gonna gank this Rise, who's lonesome, fully covered in wards in the bottom lane. So by process of elimination, Mithy's only job is to keep his top laner safe. All right, well, I see you've done your homework. Now, uh, you got any more of those Game of Thrones references? <laughs> it doesn't work if you're <laughs> obvious about them, Pyra. Hey, man, you brought it up earlier. All right. Yeah, this is, I mean, this is just textbook, though. G2, I mean, they ran a clinic last game in 40 minutes on Fnatic, and they're doing it again. Yellowstar desperately trying to head down. It's just, it's so crazy to see them do this to a team that, A, is currently sitting in I first mean, place. Fnatic dug themselves the, the, their own hole, you know? They went for a really nice play. I like it. It's it's cheeky. If spirits in the brush, it works. If he's not in the brush, you got it. You, sometimes you got to be ready to abort mission. Yeah. But this is this is the power of G2 to force decisions that aren't very optimal, or at least to force to force you into, I mean, into to punish, a bad decision. I mean, to punish you once once your good decision turns bad. Like any any good decision can turn bad if you wait long enough. Just like Gamp is staying true. here could turn bad, but he makes the quick decision. Yeah. Well, Get it's all out. about using the EQ combo. Look at him. Presses E, presses Q, flags and drags. That's going to be another tower, though, for G2. I mean, they're losing ground rapidly on the side of Fnatic here. The gold just keeps on flowing. And G2 Esports, again, they do not have to fight. They do not have to engage at all. They can just keep the pressure coming. And Fnatic, they just don't react in time. There's nothing they can really do here to get back into this game, barring forcing a, a big fight, a big catch. They don't seem to have the tools to do it either. Well, it's just not happening right now for Fnatic. And you know, time seems to be running out for the team. They'll definitely have to take a good haul, hard look at this series, no matter how it shakes out. Yeah, it's gonna be, it's looking like a three-pointer here. And I like the progression from G2. I mean, coming into the series, one of their issues was expect not being, like, communicating with the team in crucial mid-game decisions. We've had accelerated mid-games where G2 was playing from ahead, so we can't really be conclusive about them having solved that issue, but there's Groundwork being done. Well, you know, they, we've heard a little bit from some of the G2 players about the work they're doing on that. A, a couple weeks ago, Sven, you know, he had an interview, said, hey, you know, look, expect me not to speak that much, but he's talking, or rather, he's uh, he's understanding just about everything, and he's working on all these words that he's not quite confident in. Just like sitting me. with him every night. Yeah, yeah, there you go. It's uh, it's a common thing here. If you're not a native English speaker, I suppose. We have vocal coaching. We do. Apparently, I mispronounce a lot of words. That's okay. 
It's uh, it, what makes you unique, Crapo? It's a th sound. So if I start talking about do instead of do, that's when uh, I'm not a rapper, you know. I will keep that in mind. Not talking about the mad do. I'm also not a baker. You're killing me. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, G2, I mean, you, you can see the, the, the work that they're putting in paying off in this week right now. They are clearly brought their A game. Again. I mean, we have nothing left to talk about, Pyro. This is where we fill and hope that everybody is entertained during the cast because G2, they take one big chunk out of Fnatic, they punish one play, and then they play the map, and that is top tier League of Legends because teams have gotten so good at knowing how to close out games, and Fnatic, from behind, with this draft again, Things like Alistar from behind just simply don't work because it's it's a shotgun approach and it's too obvious to dodge uh, for G2. Like you need multiple champions. If you have like a Bard or yeah maybe a CDR boot thresh, it would still exist, you know, to, to kind of find some opening and hooks here. But G2 can always react here. They're too far ahead and they're so good at playing lead too. So good at playing when ahead and they just put themselves into this situation. Constantly. Next trick's gonna be Infernal as well. Obviously, the Dragons haven't played out as a very important role with the Cloud being the first one that's hit the Rift. But it's just, now with this Infernal that'll eventually come up, it's even more for G2 yep. to just easily take away. There's no in for Fnatic. They just can't find any way to get a pick off. I mean, Spirit didn't have the impact he needed early on. There's the Jin ulti. Reckless is gonna try to get a zone away, but... Still have Arrow, still have all the flash. You've available. got, you've got everything. They still have a magical journey. Several, in fact. Oh, there's the Tempered Fate. It's going to land on to Spirit. And in comes the arrow. It's going to hit him right in the back after the Nidalee Spear. And Fnatic are running scared. Meanwhile, Perks. Perks sold gas in the top yeah, lane. We, I didn't uh, know what that counter engage was from G2. Honestly, it wasn't the best. It worked somewhat. But none of their teleporters was actually in a position to teleport in. So that's a mistake. We can fault them for that. There you go. They could have killed more people. It's a mistake. The uh, the team that is currently sitting 5,000 gold in the lead, 5-1. and one. All right. Let's take a look at what happened so here. So I, I asked for this replay again. Early. Usually we don't go back this far in time. The point where it fails is obviously here. Beautiful flash from Mithy. Replay should have actually started much sooner. This is the follow-up of the play that failed. Mithy baits two people into Portal 2 and everybody ignores Sven. The presence of mind for him to just keep whittling down Gamso here. He doesn't even have to flash to... EQ combo because he knows Expect is coming in and everybody took the magical journey trying to focus on Mithy. But the start of this play was this brush on the top of your screen here, the first top lane brush. That's what Spirit was trying to enter to then kill Mithy who was going to zone off Gamsu from the wave. The second he was spotted on that Elise, they should have called off the play but they overcommitted into a play that must have worked a ton of times in scrims. But nobody kind of punished them on that and that's why they kept committing to it. But they weren't ready for, honestly, a really good flash from Mithy. And then the portal on level 2. It changed too many kind of factors, too many variables in that play. And suddenly Fnatic didn't have the adaptation in mind. And that single play, honestly, snowballed the entire game. I mean, it's, it's the same story as what happened last time with the lane swap mistake. You can't afford to make these kind of plays and make these errors against a team like G2 Esports. They punish every single time. And, you know, again, the form that they're on, it's, it's incredible to see them on this level because it just didn't look like that last week. No. Completely different G2 here. But again, they, they can make changes a lot more quicker than other teams because they have just raw talent. And you know the old saying, loses improve. It's definitely the case. G2 had a one and one on both their series the last week and they came in ready to really turn that right around and reclaim the top spot. Remember, this is the defending champions of Europe so yeah. far, which is a title usually reserved for Fnatic. I burst flash. Nope. Okay, room prisons instead. Oh, he stopped. That's uh -oh. actually, that was not a failed combo from Wait a minute. Star. He's going. No, he's dead. Yeah. Let's just. I want to see what went to. Rip Perkovich, that was a mistake. That was not a failed combo by Yellowstar. No. Okay, everybody stop fighting. That was not a failed combo from Yellowstar because the correct play is to W and respect your opponent to be smart, smart enough to flash, but Perk's flash was down. So Yellowstar wanted to W and then Q flash after Perk's, but he wasn't communicated that Perk's flash apparently was down in the earlier fight versus Gamsu. So if Perk's flash was down and was communicated, then it was a failed combo from Yellowstar. Yeah. Because nothing's happening, we have time to go into support, you know, finer mechanics. Because again, sadly, that's how you have to play Alistar at the highest level now. You have to W in and predict that they're so good that they're going to flash it, and then Q flash after them. I love it when you talk nerdy to me. Do you? In games like these, nothing, nothing better. All right. Let's get dinner then, Pyra. <laughs> talk nerdy to you all night. Uh, as long as you pay for know, dinner. We still got catering, right? Does that count? <laughs> You gonna get me Curry Wars? <laughs> you got me. Hey man, it's a Berlin Bloody Fentil cold theme. Curry Wars? That's what you're getting me? <laughs> oh god, spirit. I'm giving you my darkest, deepest support tricks and tips, and I only get 
cold curry was from catering. Tell you which what, is I'll, fantastic, I'll heat it up for you. Great, fuck. <laughs> 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 All right. So um, let's take a look at, at the catch on perks. And here I we're mean, talking is, about with the flash, right? Just yeah, like, so here technically easy. perks with flash and then Yellowstar with Q flash after. Perks obviously does not have flash. So one begs the question, what is perks doing there? And this is why we, or by we, obviously, I mean myself. <laughs> I don't like perks on Rise as much because he keeps getting caught in side lanes every game. Yeah, I, I just smile and nod, by the way. Uh, That's your role. <laughs> I <would> say, <laughs> we talked about this. Like Pyro goes like, yeah, yeah, we did. I, I remember this talk. All right, so it's 20 minutes in, but like the stranglehold just keeps getting deeper and deeper right now. Fnatic, I mean, obviously, th this game is a lost cause for them, but what is the slimmest thing that they can do? What can they actually exact, find here to exactly get back Exactly what they do right there. On cooldown, every Jin ultimate, they fire on somebody holding a side lane. They slow him down and make sure he can't TP out. And then they close the gap with Moby Boots Alistar. Or maybe a Flash Cocoon. And that's what G2 need to learn to do better. Is because this game they don't have double sidestone. So their 1 3 1 is significantly weaker vision wise, which leads to people getting caught out. I like Zillion in the 1 3 1 a lot more because Perks has speed up. Perks with Zillion would have not died there. Oh! Now Reckless gets a spear. Oh, and he is just evaporated. That is a whole lot of damage. And oh, they stop him for a second. Team. Tempered fate, trick, flashing away. Big Gnar stomps on the Goombas. It's Yellowstar and Febivin that are going down. And one misstep. Huge punishment. Yellowstar flashes away, but that's going to be in hip towers. That was sexy. You know, combo meter is 100% right there. Trick's going down. You know, Tempered fate on three members plus his own jungler. Trick flashes out. Double cosmic binding into the alley oop, dunk from expected to the side like wall, and then the, the follow up from G2. That was just utter annihilation here on the side of Fnatic. Yeah, 20 minute inhibitor after that big combo for them. They grab anything they want on the map. Fnatic overstepping their bounds just a little bit, and G2 slapping them back into place. That's gonna be Infernal Dragon. That time is a little bit too low for G2 to try and push in to finish this game off just yet, but they're looking like that's the uh, foregone conclusion. Yeah. Love me some bar combos. Finally get to play by play something, Crap. Yep. Almost stole it from you. <laughs> Going on a rant. I'm, I'm glad you uh, you let up on the gas. Get a, the get off my property. This is my world. Stuff's going around. I have to shout. So is, the, is, is you're like the guy who's yelling, "Kids, get off my lawn." In this case, the lawn is lane swap. Well, yeah, that's my lane swap lawn. Excellent. All right, right let's here, take a look at this. Now this is my again. turn. Look. Oh. oh. That's just sometimes you gotta let, let a play breathe and just a double combo spear. Look at it. One layer, two layers, three layers of CC, another spear. That Narhoff was dirty, man. Yep, it's just... I, they exhaust perks and he's like, I don't care. That's his, this is mid-T player of the game. Um, so all those bindings landing, fantastic. Because I know we're going to get buzzed by our stats guys. Like, guys, do you have your Pog? Uh, Pog is player of the game. Yes. And uh, for me, it's mid -T. Those bindings, man. Honestly, like, his bard play has been pretty fantastic across the board. But nobody on... Okay. I say nobody. There have been, like, as you said, a few small mistakes on the side of G2. But in this entire series, in all honesty, we haven't seen a lot of individual mistakes outside of maybe Trick getting caught, or uh, Perks getting, yeah. except for Expect getting caught a little bit last game. Both. This game? Both Expect and Perks. And Perks now, yeah. Like, and it's one time. Okay, Mithy does face tank. No, that's a calculated risk because he knows he has backup. Oh, okay. Spirit so hops over the arrow. That's fine though, like it's a low enough cooldown for them to just keep on pushing in. You've got to expect, they have the 4-1, they keep on roving through the jungle. I mean, Fnatic are, they're not blind, they've got a few wards down, but I mean, look at what G2 have got here. There's just no ground they can really run to. Yeah, they're just isolating the Baron right now. Uh, Spirit, knowing that those spiders have uh, many more knees than just a functional human being, so he definitely needs to dodge that arrow. And he hops over and now is just waiting for the face check. Oh, and they get it. There's a big combo, but in comes Trick no to damage. try and turn the damage around. They just don't have any. Teleport here. Desperation time for Fnatic. In comes Gamsu, but Perks has already taken out Yellowstar. Flag and drag, and into the chains they go. And that's not going to be nearly enough to take out anybody except for Perks. Last tick of the Chaos Storm. Febivin, nearly untouched, but Expect starts to instantly turn that around and chase down not one, not two, but three members of Fnatic. Expect just going wild. And now Spirit. Spirit, tanking the spear, trick hops on him, and that arrow isn't even needed. Big fight for G2, big cleanup. Expect goes mental, 1 for G on the back line here with this Gnar. I really like the Jar and Victor combo if it works. It kind of goes from a Chaos Storm to a Chaos Pit. Everybody's stuck in these walls, taking the inevitable storm damage that ticks every two seconds, and it worked, but there simply wasn't enough damage. We saw the new Alistar 2 uh, post nerf. Yeah, you push your ultimate, you're no longer invisible. Uh, Yellowstar dropped. Like a hot knife to butter. 
and then the cleanup came from Expect. Yeah, uh, I liked, I definitely liked the Chaos Dunk, but it just wasn't enough damage, like you said. They've been too yep. far behind. And you can see, they were 1v2 for a moment, and that's exhaust. about it. Yeah, Exhaust comes out. Yellowstar here, just... That's, that's your tankiest fair. member, by the way. And then here, Chaos Dunk, as you said, really beautiful, but if this happens on an even game, this is like a game-winning play, but it's not enough, because Expect's like, guys, I'm a fed top laner, despite uh, early lane stop shenanigans. Yep. And, then and, they just run away from the and he goes for the flash finish here as he goes into Mega oh. R. Beautiful. Yeah, scoops him right into the wall. And then Spirit's pretty much left hanging. And yeah, it's all cleanup crew for G2 here. They definitely know how to take a game to its logical conclusion. So they isolate out the Baron. Easy peasy. They don't even need to take it right now because they keep on chasing. It's only 24 and a half minutes in, remember. This is a 9,000 gold lead. It's just been snowballing out of control since yeah. that early game. They know the only way they can throw is to Baron. So they need the perfect setup. They have like... 10,000 gold that they can spend securing the Baron, which we, which they can do inefficiently, and then they still get it, they'll still win the game because of the position of the map. You know, what's really important for G2 though, and, and obviously these two games, it's probably hard to demonstrate some of these weaknesses, but we always have been criticizing them for being just a little, a smidgen over aggressive sometimes. Mm -hmm. Somebody flashing, trying to get the quick cleanup kill. They've controlled their aggression so well, these two games. And it's been so calculated. This is the goal. This was this was what they were striving for. We're seeing it here. This is a team that has gone Super Saiyan. Yeah. And Trix, uh, which Super Saiyan though? Early in the series when they're playing weak opponents or later? I think one? it's uh, it's like somewhere between one and two. So the hair just keeps growing right now. Yeah, right. These uh, he's caught, but he's got a magical journey. It's gonna stop the Baron. But look, they didn't even need to finish it. Febivin. He's caught on the Tempered Fate, they chain it in, the Chaos Storm comes, but that's not anything that they needed. Expect, he's still 1v3 they turn to Reckless, pounce on him, a double kill over to Trick, and it's Yellowstar's turn to fall, a triple kill for the Kitty Cat, and that's yeah. gonna be base. In terms of like blonde hair length, I was gonna ask you, is it Reckless level of Super Saiyan, but this looks like a Nuke Duck level of Super Saiyan from G2 Esports here, complete domination. I got one tweet saying, Grepo, it was a 14 minute game, this wasn't domination in game one. Well, guess what? This one is G2 just towering at shoulders above Fnatic, based all on that first play, and then super clean map play gets them two inhibitors and full access to the Baron. 12,000 gold, eight towers to three. They've taken every objective in the game, given so few away. Fnatic have no where to run. G2, it's a matter of time before they come knocking. Yeah, and while this is such a sweep, it's very easy to identify the key moments in both these games. So the replay analysis for Fnatic will be rather swift. There's three phases in game one, and then there's one phase in game two, and that's it done. So at least they know where to look for their faults. For G2, they also know where to refine their strategy. They really need to be more careful here being picked off. And also, they need to stop relying on individually outplaying opponents in some of these skirmishes too. Here we saw the engage on Mithy, but he can still get into a portal despite being denied once. And Febin just the very end. And then, yeah, the chain CC comes oh. out. Meanwhile, expect. Yup, expect his support. I mean, he demands so much pressure at this point. Like, this is, this NAR play is ridiculous. Yes, yeah. they're ahead, but I mean, come on, he keeps getting the multi-bops. Now, obviously, G2 Esports is looking at uh, potentially going to Worlds, obviously, given the amount of uh, circuit points that they've gathered, etc. And they need to stop relying on just individually outplaying opponents too and look more for these like really efficient macro plays because if you get to the highest level honestly when you play the likes of skt etc they're gonna match you in individual individual skill and then obviously strategy is required yeah he locked the baron that's step one though is getting that lcs title once again Sven and mythy joining this team trying to get their first lcs title but they can beat the old kings of europe and keep the dominance going it looks like that is going to be the case and it has never looked so easy Taking out Yellowstar, chasing Spirit. He might have eight legs, but he's not running fast enough. Yeah. But this is, this is an unfair battle at this point for Fnatic. They're like fighting with the Kid Sword. Whoa. You ever played the Legend of Zelda games? Like the first three little sword that you get? That's what Fnatic's wielding right now. And G2 has got the uh, the upgraded Master Sword. Yeah. It's, uh, it's not really fair. 12,000 gold lead at 28 minutes is something. They've been collecting rupees while they go, too. Yeah. That's they, have a, the, uh... they have a sixth member worth in gold right now. <laughs> Jeez. Two esports. Yeah, they're not lacking for money, and this Baron will start to put the final nail in the coffin. 28 minutes and down it goes since nobody there to contest. Super minions in two lanes here for Fnatic to desperately deal with as they start knocking down the towers. Keep on flowing, and G2, they can take their time and scenically roll through the Summoner's Rift before finishing this victory. Yeah, they can look at some of the wonders 
that we've put into this game. They can pass by the frog that our observer is so frantically obsessed about. And the owls. And the owls, it's honestly. It's a Harry Potter menagerie in here. Honestly, a bit too much at times. <laughs> it's a little scary how much Kevin loves his owl. Okay. Yeah. Let's well, watch this again. Yeah. Before we get into <laughs> owl business. I was going to talk about observers being trolls. This is more important. Yeah. Zoning ultimate for Mithy. <laughs> That's what we call them. Yeah. As you missed, no, 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 no. I was simply moving the enemy forward into the fight uh, with the ultimate. Expect, turns out that Nar can get pretty tanky. And yeah, chase happens. And then look at Victor, he's there. Eventually, I don't think he will be there anymore. Do they actually kill him this fight? Yeah, Portal comes over. Feven drastically trying to wave through. Exhaust the flash on perks. Guess what? Feven drops too. It's just, it's too easy right now. Yeah. I mean, this is, the thing is like, Neither team really would know what happened to the scrim because uh, this is a point where you open mid. This is no, this is where you you uh, yeah you say like GG well played go next. Yeah. Um, so it's 29, 20, it's 30 minutes. I mean this is just a slow march in Fnatic. They know they've lost so much ground. We might see one blast before the end. Yeah. Kamsu EQs. He's gonna get knocked by the arrow though, and there's a big gnar. He's yeah. gonna go golden for a second, and the Fnatic members start to drop. Yellow Star going first. Sven takes him out. Gamsu goes for the dunk. The Chaos Storm, not enough damage. And they want to pad those stats. But that's Inhibitor. And G2 Esports, 2-0. and zero, Clinic on Fnatic. Yeah, that phase where those three Inhibitors were down at the very end. Fnatic, you know, vying for the throne. But if that was a wedding, the reigns of Castamere would start playing right there. Sadly, swift end to Fnatic's chances in this series. Honestly, beautiful 2-0 here from G2. At least Spirit can still smile. That's what I love about that guy. He's always smiling. Um, Fnatic taking it, honestly, reasonably well. You have to take a loss like that in stride, even if there's not a whole lot you can do. Fnatic See, I are definitely the kings of coming back and, and looking stronger. We yeah, I hope no fans watch this and is like, why are they smiling? They're not taking it serious. You know, at one point, you know you've got to act fast and you got to go back to the drawing board. As a player that always used to get angry after losses, like I would always rage at myself after loss, and I would be so upset that my teammates would never be ups equally upset, you know, because how can they not care enough? It is the wrong mentality. I think it's great to see that Fnatic here, honestly, take it with a smile. They know where they messed up. They can easily identify these mistakes, and they know exactly what they need to fix for next week. Hopefully, they start fixing it. And it's better now than playoffs. I mean, Fnatic as a team, they know that this kind of loss you can learn quite a bit from about yourself, about your opponents. Loses improve. But for now... You have been playing a lot of solo and queues. Just enough. And that's, that's quite sadly, that's <laughs> one of the only phrases that you can actually put on broadcast. Yeah. That you hear all the time in solo uh, Yeah, you do hear a lot of things that you're not allowed don't, to say on broadcast. Don't, yeah. don't think gonna, about I'm the other phrases. I'm not going to go into the other ones. Don't, don't, don't jinx me on this. But yeah, Fnatic, they can definitely take a lot away from that. But for G2, they can go back and be...